an interesting, an interesting comment made by um, I uh, is it Iconok 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 Music is very interesting. There's a comment made by Iconok, um, huh? I knock. Sorry, I knock. I knock. Give thanks. I knock music. I knock music made an interesting comment in his Imperial Majesty's uh, In My Life in Ethiopia's uh, Progress, Volume 1, page uh, 235, upon mobilization of the army in the Second Italo-Ethiopian War. H.I.M. Hala Selassie makes the statement um, to the war minister, quote, it gives us pleasure watching your departure, determined to shed your blood for your country's independence and for us, your emperor, and his honor. Now, Edward um, Uhlendorf, the translator, he makes a note that he finds that the mixture of singular and plural suffixes referring to the emperor is disturbing. While I Knock Music made this comment about two days ago saying that I find the same mode of referencing to oneself all throughout the Book of Jubilees. And this is something that we also made a connection with His Imperial Majesty's um, revelation and manifestation. You see, this whole issue about Christ and his kingly character, you understand, is quite interesting. Because let's just put this up here. Um, let's put Christ. Christ, right, in his kingly character, right? Christ in his kingly character, right? Christ in his kingly character. Now, first of let's put um, the book of Jubilees, right, that is known as, or better, it's known as um, uh, Ku Fa Lei. It's known as Ku Fa Lei, right? Ku Fa Lei, which some uh, interpret as meaning divisions or portions, right? Portions or divisions. Actually, we also use this word more appropriately when we talk about the, the, the Torah portions or the Kufal. The Kufal of Torah portions are known as the Kufal. Kufale is also showing this sort of division from the same basic root, you understand? In the Hebrew, they say Padasha, so from so on. This book is also called um, Little. Let's put this up here. It's also called, quote, um, Little by some interpreters and translators, Little Genesis. It's called Little Genesis as well. Now, when we look at the issue of Christ and his kingly character and the comment that I knock, I knock um, music made based on what um, Edward Uhlendorf, and let's actually get this right here, what Edward Uhlendorf said, and this also ties into another point that we've been making very recently. Now, what we have right here, now this is the English, this is the English um, translation, right? This right here is, as you can see, this is the, this is the Amharic translation, or this is the original. Here's the original that Uhlendorf, or one like it that Uhlendorf had um, worked from. Um, and let's give you the title page right here so you can see the evidence. Um, it's Hiwete Na Yechop Ia Erimja. There you go, right there, right? So this is book, actually. This is Andenya Metzhaf, or, or the first book. You understand? The first book. Now, when we go to the particular page, that um, I Knock Music was referring to was page uh, 235. So let's, so let's get to 235 for a moment, on page 235, where His Imperial Majesty is um, speaking on um, giving a statement on mobilization. So on 235, this is, I think this is the page that you were um, selecting, and this is the area that is um, being discussed. Right? And my life in Ethiopia's progress, which says it gives us, it gives us, and then next to the us, there's a, there's a, um, a footnote, 27, and we go to the bottom, it says, the mixture of singular and plural suffixes here, referring to the emperor, is a little disturbing. Is a little disturbing. Why is it disturbing? Because you have to remember that Uhlendorf, although being an excellent and a great translator, 
and I would say somewhat of a superior European, a superior European because he had access to the truth and because of a lot that he tried to put out was from what his own conscience could tell him was the truth. He didn't try to be so-called racist like a lot of Europeans for, he was actually a seeker of truth. In fact, if you look at a video, there's a video called The Devil's Advocate where some other slanderers of his imperial majesty have a, had a BBC show, had some Rastafarians on there, as well as some of the um, um, so-called flesh and blood descendants of Haile Selassie who were, were there, and Ulanov was there as well. And the whole question had come up in the, in the Devil's Advocate program concerning his majesty and the Rastafarians saying that he is God. And then they ask the, the, the children and the grandchildren and some other people what you think about this, the, the black devil that is the main host of the show. And then this black Diablos, Tick or Diablos, then goes and asks Ullendorf, right, concerning this particular matter. And Ullendorf, I'm not quoting him literally, but he gives a very interesting and very cryptic kind of response when they ask him, is his majesty God? Ullendorf says, um, um, something to the effect of, um, 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 I don't know, almost like, what do you mean by God? You understand? In other words, I don't know what you mean by God or what is meant when you say God. And many people will dismiss it and say, oh, he should have just said no. Why is he, he must be becoming a Rastafarian. You know, people must have thought all sorts of things because how come he didn't just say no like everybody else is saying no? Because of his knowledge. You understand? If you know the works of Ullendorf, you know, saying whether it's Ethiopia and the Bible or various other documents from Ethiopic and Hebrew and ancient Shemitic sources going back thousands of years, you will see that he has translated various from various Shemitic and ancient languages, including Ethiopic, and understanding there are very interesting differences in the thought pattern of the ancient people and the original people, or like um, Kushite uh, Somalian male says, of the aboriginal, the aboriginal people look at it differently. So we're now in a different image today. We actually are in the image of the Gentiles, what the Bible calls the image of the beast, which doesn't just mean, you know, putting on wigs and, and, and lighting your skin. That's one level. That's one manifestation of being and living in the image of the beast. However, there's also the way that many so-called black people think because they have not really been exposed to education, first of all, and not to education from their own. They've been exposed to education by the Europeans and others, like a whole bunch of Africans and so forth and so on, and this just contributes, you understand, to more of the problem. You understand more of the problem, not understanding even their own cultural indigenous roots, you understand, and the truth from their own perspective. They're not sitting under their own vine and fig tree. You understand, they're not even worshiping their own God. They don't even know the definition of God. But if you study the scriptures, if you study even the Bible, it's the Hebrew Bible, you'll find that there are many different words that are used and different constructions that are used for what is commonly translated as capital L-O-R-D, Lord, or capital L, lower O-R-D, or lowercase L-O-R-D, or capital G-O-D, or capital G, lowercase O-D, or lowercase G-O-D, or lowercase G-O-D-S. There are many different words used. You understand, many different, even in the Arabiya Fusha, of the of Al Quran of the Quran, there's also different words that are different constructions of Allah. There are there's Allahumma, which some say means Elohim or likened to the the Hebrew Elohim, so forth and so on. So we have to really understand these things. So when the question was presented to Edward Ullendorf, is his imperial majesty, majesty God in that program, um, the devil's advocate? And we have this, I think we have the video available if one wants it for purchase, but it also should be out there if one wants us to, to view it or, or watch it. If one is interested, visit www.lojsociety.org and click on the um, doc videos um, link, so forth and so on, or just look it up on the Internet devil's advocate and put Rasta, Rastafari, Selassie, and, and it probably will come up.
somewhere and you can get some more information. And hopefully you can see that clip. That clip, if we had an opportunity, we would have fixed the clip with what we're doing right here so you can just, we can all hear exactly what Ullendorf says. But Ullendorf says, I don't know what, you know, what, what God is. You know, in other words, not who God is to him, because you have to remember that even for the Israelites, Moses was sent, and he was sent to say, say the, God of, the God of the Hebrews, the God of the Hebrews have sent me to you. And Moses, quite rightly, says, um, suppose they ask me what is his name, what is, what is the name. They, they're going to ask me about the Shem, about the Sim. They're going to ask me about what is the name, what shall I say. This is very interesting. This means that the Hebrews had already got into a point where they might have started to worship other gods instead of Ayu or Eo or Yah. You understand? They start to worship other gods. You know what I'm saying? Or other, they got involved in other religious denominations, like today for the Ethiopians, a lot of the Ethiopians enter what they call the Pente. You hear the thing about the Pente or the Wengalawit churches, the evangelical churches, and some of the Pentecost or the Pente um, um, sorcerer, demon spell, Holy Ghost fire kind of churches are going on in Ethiopia today as well. So we see that Ethiopians, you meet the Ethiopians and say, you're a Christian, and they'll say, yes, I'm a Christian, but you didn't ask what denomination of a Christian are you. You understand? It's just like somebody said, do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. Do you believe in one God? Yes, I believe in one God. Okay, so we all worship the same God. What is his name? You understand? What is the name of the God? You understand? And this is very scriptural, very biblical. So Ullendorf's response, and this is, this is um, on a level, not in praise of Ullendorf, but says praise the man for a good work, in praise of Ullendorf's honesty. What I like about Ullendorf is Ullendorf's honesty. He didn't go all out of his way to make a big speculation of, of why he finds disturbing, like that something's wrong with his magic, but he just, he says for him as a translator, because he's used to, he's trying to translate it into, as they call it, um, so-called good English. You understand? And it's hard for him to be able to translate it into good English. You understand? Seeing that it changes. You understand? It changes from plural to singular. Now, if you look in the um, My Life in Ethiopia's Progress right here, there's two numbers. There's 235, but then there's a number that's in a, a half bracket, and it's 195. 195, that other number tells you we're in the Amharic, you understand, we're in the Amharic, it is, it is, it is, it is found, like we're in the Amharic version here. Now, this particular sentence where Matsi says, it gives us pleasure watching your departure, comma, determining to shed your blood for your country's independence and for us, comma, your emperor, comma, and his honor. Now, let's look at this and listen to this Bamarinya. All right. In the in the Amharic, it says Lagare Netanetna Lenya Le Nagusa Negesti Kubur Demehina Le Mafses Korte Mene Satehin Mayetachin Des Yemiasenno. Now, let's look at this. He says, for your country, for your country's independence and lenya for us, for the king of, for your king of kings, kubur, ana, demehen, your singular male blood, Le maf ses to spill or to shed quarte you male have determined quarte mene sa to hin you understand mene sa to hin in other words in 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 almost like lifting up almost like in the sense of the sacrifice lifting up being lifted up you understand you're being lifted up you understand you're determining being lifted up I was seeing my attention death. Joy, yemiyaseno. In other words, in seeing, in seeing your, your, your almost like saluting or your, your raising of the hand, your raising of the hand for determination, you understand, to, to, to shed your blood. Now, what's interesting about the word menasat, menasat to him. 
if you look in the Hebrew, um, there is one of the divine names of Yahweh or Jehovah. Uh, they, they'll say Jehovah Nisi. Nisi. Look up etymologically in the Strong's Concordance and the Jesenius uh, uh, Lexicon if you want to get some of the background to really understand both the Ethiopic Hebraicness, you understand, of the Ethiopian language and of his imperial majesty. You understand? It's, it's very important to, um, you know, check this, you know, to check this out right there. Now, the part about, the part about going from, you know, going from one to the next, where he says, for us, you're king of kings. He says down here, the mixture of single and plural, plural suffixes here, referring to the emperor, is a little disturbing. What Ullendorf probably was not, um, you know, was not, was not maybe conscious of while translating it, even though later on, if you go to the beginning of Ullendorf's um, translation here, let's just go to the beginning of the translation here. He makes a couple of statements, a couple of very interesting statements. Um, first of all, in November 1975, in the postscript, if you remember the postscript right there, the postscript, speaking of this right here, the postscript, he says in this postscript right here, he says, since this preface was written more than six months ago, the death of Emperor Haile Selassie occurred, or at least was reported to occur by the news media um, on the 27th of August, 1975. While he was denied a proper burial by those who now rule Ethiopia, and the place of his interment remains unknown, the serious organs of the world press have published obituaries of a depth and size not previously accorded to any other African leader. A memorial even song and presentation of God to Banner attended by his son and heir and an impressive congregation took place at St. George's Windsor Castle and a memorial tribute was offered by the Earl of Avon. Now, it's interesting because St. George's Castle, I think back in 1990, I think it was during the um, centenary year of his imperial majesty. That was 1992. You understand, 1992, where many Rastafari and others went to Ethiopia. This was around the same time that they were doing this um, hoax, this bone lies, um, concerning the third attempt to uh, bury Haile Selassie, or the reburial, or some burial kind of bone lie thing. Um, that Windsor Castle, I remember it was, it was at a Naya Bingi. I mean, after Naya Bingi, we heard, or somebody may have come into the Bingi and told us that Windsor Castle or St. George's Cathedral, somehow there was a lightning strike or something, and there was a fire. Some alleged there was a lightning strike that had occurred, and it was on fire. And that's, if you go on the Internet, you'll find out exactly when. I think this was around 1992. But it was some significant time that this same St. George's Windsor Castle um, suffered a lot of damage. If it was 92, that would even be very much more interesting, seeing that was a, that would be 100 years since the birth of the Son of Man, Lich Teferi, known as Rastafari and better known as Keremawi Haile Selassie. But here, EU, or Edward Ullendorf, he says, Thus a life has ended of which, in brackets, like Moses in Deuteronomy 34, like Moses in Deuteronomy 34, Quote, no man knoweth of his sepulcher to this day, end quote. And until his last days, it says, quote, his eye was not dimmed, nor his natural force abated. This is also a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 34, end quote. Those of us who really knew the man and the king will long mourn the passing of Haile Selassie, for there will not arise in Ethiopia anyone quite in his image. Anyone quite in his image. So he, he makes certain comments here um, concerning his imperial majesty that shows his, his, uh, his, his, his straightforward attempts to be uh, uh, accurate historian, but somewhat not going into the spirituality of it. It seems as though he, he was more or less, I guess when you're researching all these ancient documents from the past and seeing similarities, so from someone, you might become a little bit 
um, as he called it, agnostic. I don't think he was an atheist, but I think he was more agnostic in that sense. He says, give me the facts, let me look over the facts, let me research them, so forth and so on. But as a scholar or academia, as a reference point, we find Edward Ullendorf to be quite, um, quite interesting and a quite honest, comparatively speaking, broker. Even though we do go through a little critique in our book, Rastafari Notes, the H.I.M. Halle Selassie, um, and Hard Bible, we go through some notes there as well. There's some areas where we felt that he hedged his bets a lot. You understand? He hedged his bets a lot, and sometimes he refused, you understand, to call a spade a spade. And what he refused to acknowledge here about what I Knock Music mentioned from page um, 235 was this is the spiritual aspect of, of, of the father and son. This is the Trinity actually in its realistic and real-time operation. In other words, his imperial majesty is not going out of his way like a lot of other people would if they were in his position to say, you see me, see me, see me, I'm God, I'm this and that. In fact, walking very humbly, doing the work, proving, you understand, proving his, his faith, you understand, by his works. Not trying to say, my faith is this, my faith is this, I'm a, I'm a great kind of guy. No, doing that and even suffering a lot of the slanders, you understand? And this should encourage us to this very day with the likes of like the Genas, you understand, the Jins, the Jins and the Janats and the, and the Johns, you understand, the, the, the race of, of, of greedy, envious um, demoniacs who only want to hide and cover the truth. In a sense, this is like the Arabic word, the kafir. We say Bamarinya, we say Kahadi. This is a Kahadi, a Kahadi. A Kahadi is like a denier. These are just some deniers. They are Kahadi. They know what the truth is, you understand? But they refuse to accept it because God gives them the ability to talk and to lie as much as they want to lie. So they will go on and, 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 and lie, you understand? But that right there is actually a good, I would say, test for us. You understand? But, but, but the devil and these devils actually make us better. You see, they make us better when we are walking in the way, the truth, and the life. You understand? When we walk in the way, the truth, and the life, they make us better. You understand? Because their challenges, they, they in a sense, provoke us even more to, to, to conform to the image and, 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 and the template of righteousness, which is Getachin Namit Hanatachin Jesus Christos, which is the Moshiach, the Messiah, Yeshua, Yehoshua, you know, to that template of God. Now, when our brother Inoch, Inoch, um there's another comment we want to make, but we might leave that off for, for another place in time, but when the brother Inoch refers to that and then also says that, um, that it's the same mode, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same mode of referencing to oneself that's used all throughout the book of Ju Jubilees. It's very interesting because we've noticed in our studies of the book of Jubilees, and we really need to start to study these things in our own academic, scholastic way, you understand, and, and present our findings. Yeah, and I think what I Knock Music said right here, I would like to read more of, if you have other you understand, critique or other, other points to make. And we have to encourage each other in writing. I think it's so important because a lot of you all have some good ideas. And now the media and the technology has gotten to the point in time where it's, you don't have to go to some big publishing company and then have like 25 editors look over your thing and change it around into something that it, it never was. You understand, in fact, in this particular in this particular um, um, ministry, Lion and Juice Society, we are seeking to um, gather with other brothers and sisters and reason with other brothers and sisters who have certain, maybe wrote certain papers, reports, and to create a journal, uh, uh, hopefully a quarterly journal. We may have to start out with one maybe um, biannual, you understand, or maybe just start out with one annually. You understand, one a year, but a journal where certain documents and certain researches and certain um, certain certain writings are, are, are presented. You understand, in one documentary. So say, I may write a couple of articles or make a couple of studies presentation of certain things. Because sometimes we write certain things and we do certain research. And it's not enough for a book in itself. 
but it is very important. You could either put it up on the Internet. Some have even put their, their work up on the Internet. Some very good work has been published, self-published online. But it's so important to put it into a document like a book because a lot of that which we're able to reference to in this present time, others have put in, in, in book and document form. Even um, the great Edward Uhlendorf, there's a lot of essays. That, he got some books out there which are just like essays. Some of them are like 25, 18 pages, like Wolf Leslaw. Some of them only are maybe 100 pages long. And they were just talking about certain minor, well, important areas, but certain areas like what you're talking about, Inoc music, with some of your observations and um, some of the, the similarities, such as with the Book of um, Jubilees. But the Book of Jubilees is important. The reason why we actually got on this particular subject matter, you understand, if Christ is king of character, is because we're talking about, let's write this up here. We can put this as a note until we come back to this. As um, speaking on the, what we call the um, meh, she, he. Now, it could also be Meshi who, you understand, the Messiah, but the Meshi, the Meshi, Meh, it was sometimes be written like this, and uh, a bigger H because it's a, it's a, huh, 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 and like, like, like when, it, when, when you hear the, the um, Arabic speakers say Muhammad, they'll say Muhammad, 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 like Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that huh. It has that. It has that sort of, and it's and it's more purity. It's gotten somewhat softened, as the linguists will say. It's gotten somewhat effeminized in later Amharic. That means the the real sound has gotten softened. You understand? Such as even the the s sound. The s sound will be more properly um, ma she, like this ma she. Sometimes you'll see it written with a little dot right there. That's not the K8 sound. Don't get confused. That's not the K8 sound. It's the Negusu Ha, you understand, which is the K8 sound. So really, Mashiach, 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 Mashiach. Almost like Bach uh, uh, to a degree. But Mashiach, it all has to do with the Messiah. And in the book of Jubilees, what many of the early um, um, translators and, and commentators have noticed is that, and this is why some Christians initially didn't want to receive this as a book on divine authority, because they said that it seemed to present a different Christ, or it, it, presents, it presents a different Messiah. The Messiah that it presents is somewhat different from what they know in the gospel, but yet it was also heavily quoted. You understand? It was heavily quoted by... Um, by the first century Christians. So the first century Christians knew of this book, and the second book that's like it, as you'll probably know, is the book of Enoch, often called the book of Ethiopic Enoch, also called um, Hainok. You understand? Or Hainok, 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 right? Hainok right here. The book of Enoch as well. We're talking about the Ethiopic. Let's put Ethiopic right here just for for sake of clarity. The Ethiopic books, you know what I'm saying, which were preserved only fully in their Ethiopic or Ethiopian or good is text. But they said that the Jubilees, the book of Jubilees, presents um, a, a, a different Christ or a different Messiah. At a, at, 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 at a point, like after it presents the Christ that we know in simile and in figure, right? But then it seems to present a different um, kind of a second coming, so to speak. And remember, this is all foreign when we add second coming. The Bible doesn't really say anything about second coming in that sense. You understand? Know it talks about the ever coming one and the one who is coming again and the, and the ever coming one. And this goes back to the ancient, more the ancient mythos. But be that as it may, it presents a different Messiah. And this different Messiah is not another Christ. People will say it's another Christ, but that there is a different dispensation that they do not be, they're not able to um, jive with their. Um, with their, um, their, 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 their Western interpretation. Now, what's interesting is that it does present 
the histories up until like the New Testament time, they can see Jesus Christ or the Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, in the book of Jubilees. But it seems as though after that, there is another presentation of, of the Messiah or God coming again that is not like what they had believed before knowing of the book of Jubilees and the book of Enoch. And this other manifestation of, of Christ, I'm trying to get this and remember this. I'm going to have to go to the text and present a more detailed study, but since I'm, I'm responding to Enoch music on this important point, um, this, this, this important point that I'm able to respond to right here, I just want to put this out as best as I recall it, that this other appearance of the Messiah or an anointed, there's another anointed one that almost seems to come between the after Christ, you understand, but be the Father. In other words, there's a, there's, there's, there's a very interesting, in other words, when I read it and read some of the commentaries, I said, Basically what they're saying, but maybe, and some of these books were actually prior to, some of the translations were prior to the coming to the throne of his imperial majesty, um, that actually it was speaking about his imperial majesty. In other words, it's what John chapter 16 says. And in John chapter 16, it says something, I'll put this right here so one can understand. John chapter 16, where Christ is talking about that the spirit of truth and righteousness that's in him will manifest again. But he says, you're not going to see me. But when you see he, you will think that you see me by virtue of the truth and the righteousness. And that he that you will see will be coming in the fatherhood of God. You understand? Before that, before that, that, that end of, that, that full end. will come just before that full end of the, for lack of a better word, the matrix. So there's a there's an eschatology as they call it, which is a way of looking at the prophetical kind of you know prophetical abstraction of what's going to happen in the last days. You understand the last things that will happen. You understand the the the, the study of the like end of the world and all of that that many people um that many people uh, are, are, are talk about that um, is different from a, a white European because they only had a limited amount of scriptures. And from these limited amount of scriptures, they went gun ho ahead and they formed various different denominations and various different interpretations. This is why Christians today, if you ask a set of Christians today in any sort of detail about what they think the Bible is saying about what's going to happen in the last days, one thing you'll find is that many of them are at variance. They are at disagreement. And that actually is more disturbing than what Ullendorf said. The use of the, of the singular and the plural is another sign of the Jewish or the Hebraic trinity, another true sign of the whole God and Father. It's like when you read in Christ. If you read in the Bible, there are many places where Christ also speaks about when he says, I and the Father are one. He says he prays that, that we will be one with, 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 with him. And if we're one with him, then as he is one with the Father, then we are all one. Now think about that for a moment. If Christ is with the Father, most people say that's two, right? That's how most people will count it. Then if I am in Christ and I'm one with Christ, and then Christ is one of the Father. Will that make three of us? But in Christ's language, he is saying that is all one. That is all one. So we have to understand the context. And I think what Ullendorf here was looking at was strictly a linguistic. He was looking at the, 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 the science of it from a scientific, as a scientific scholar. You know what I'm saying? And what he was ignoring as Brother Inoch and as Inoch even, even put there, is that it's the same way of, of, of the divine or, or one who is in the divine reality, one who is in the divine oneness. There's no really other word to describe it because it's not a partnership. You see, it's not no partnership. You understand? It's a oneness. When Christ says that if you are in my word, if you keep my word, then, then we are one, you understand, as I and the Father is one, and then we all are one. So it's still coming down to the Ahadu Amlak, 
But when we now understand it in the manifestation, we see that there is a trinity or a triunity, but not to be confused and confounded with what the demons and those who were, were in error have presupposed. You see what I'm saying? Because in other religions and even in certain witchcrafts and other things, they have a certain similar concepts. They use some of the similar language. You understand? I mean, what the devil does, in fact, if you read the cover of the guest, the devil actually takes things that he knew of God, you understand? And he basically uses these things he knows of God, but there's no real revelation. You see, there's no real revelation. It's like a regurgitation. It's like, well, if Christ said, when I come back, I'm going to stand on that corner over there, the devil will go and stand on that corner and say, hey, I'm on the corner, so you know who I am, you know, to trick you. So there's no real revelation to that. It's like a regurgitation to trick those, you know what I'm saying, who have not studied to show themselves approved. But when we study, even by studying Edward Ullendorf's work and studying his commentary of His Majesty's language, you understand, that there's a mixture of the singular. Because when he's speaking, um, note something about this right here. I know we're, we're a little bit um, long-winded on this right here, but if, if you're willing, I'm going to go on a little bit more and just get into this right here for a moment. That might be able to clarify it. Um, I like to clear the, the, the board, but let's just go through this right here. Where he says, La Gare. Now, who was he speaking to? Let's get the English right here, um, page uh, 235 again. Let's go to page 235. On 235, it begins... Um, it begins on, 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 in section 11 where it says, if after the campaign proclaim has been issued, you are found committing acts of brigandage, brigand, brigandage or supplying to the enemy provisions or anything at all, you will be deprived of your patrimony and property. You will be punished mercilessly and have the death penalty inflicted upon you. Then he goes on to say, we arrange the order of battle as is described here below. In the north, Ras Kasa was to be the commander in chief in defense against the enemy coming by way of the Tigre um, or Tigre. Um, under him were, and then he goes through a list of other Rases and dead judges and, and other officials, right? And then he goes to Ras Kasa. You understand? Mention Ras Kasa and certain events there. And then it says on the 8th of uh, Tekim, um the 19th of October, 1935, when he took leave of us by parading the army in front of us, we gave him, since he had to proceed with the troops, and the army mustered before us the following precise orders. So he says, we gave who? We gave him, speaking of, of uh, Ras Kasa, and the army, the following orders. Now, he says he finds this um, mixture of when he says it gives us, it gives us pleasure, it gives us pleasure in, in um, it gives us pleasure. And then he says before your singular king, because it's like the Bible, in the Bible where, where Yahweh um, is speaking to the Israelites through the prophets, um, or even through Moses. There's many areas, if you could read it even in the Hebrew, where, where the Most High is speaking to the people, sometimes as you all. Other times, like for example, let me say the commandments. The commandments are given overall in the male singular. When these commandments, when the divine commandments are being given, they're given in the male singular in the language. See, a lot of translators later on, and this is what confuses a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that a lot of translators have done this without even saying they did it, is that where it's speaking to, say, a group of people, but it's speaking in the singular sense. The original speaker is speaking to you singular. Like many places where the Lord is speaking to Israel, you understand, in the prophets, sometimes he's speaking to you singular male. There are sometimes in the prophetical works and in the Bible, in the original languages, where he's speaking to the people or to Israel as you singular female. There are other times where he's speaking to Israel as you all. 
So we have to really understand that now when it translated as many times, translated this, they figured out the context and they said, well, you know what, even though the person was speaking to this group of people, like here, his majesty is speaking to Ras Kasa and the army, and like in Exodus chapter 20, Yahweh is speaking to Israel, to Moses and Israel, he is commanding all of Israel as a singular male, as a singular male. And throughout many of the areas of Torah or the Orit, in the original language, whether you go to the Masoretic Hebrew, you understand, or whether you go to the Ethiopic or the Royal of Hark, the Emperor's Bible, you will find this to be the truth. And even in certain areas of the Septuagint, the LXX, you will find this to be the truth, that when he's speaking to the populace, you understand, or, the, or all assembled, he is mainly speaking to each male. It's like if I'm speaking to you all, and we're speaking the language, and instead of me saying um, um, enante, you know, right, enante, which is to say you all, instead I say um, ante, even though there's nothing but brothers, there's, there's like a there's like, uh, hundred, a thousand, you understand, 144,000 even, you understand, but I'm speaking to all of you all as ante. That means that each man, I'm speaking to each one of y'all individually. That means y'all to take these commandments and these orders to heart individually. You, you're not going to take it like if I'm talking to you all, then you might be, well, he ain't talking to me, he's talking to you. No, I'm talking to you too. I'm talking to each one of y'all singular, singularly. You understand? Now, he's speaking of himself as we. Now, people say, why is he using this royal we? Because you have to remember, what is the title of Ketamari Haile Selassie? What is the true protocol? You understand the protocol, the royal protocol of Haile Selassie. And this book also shows us the royal protocol of his imperial majesty, although many times many Rastafarians, and that's partly because of a lack of, you know, education. You know, where we have not, uh, each brother and each ones and ones have not really had an opportunity to really study Rastafari. You understand? It's almost like many of us have grabbed Rastafari in a sense, almost like, a, um, like, like, like we're in a sea of confusion, and this is a life raft or a lifeboat. You understand? So we've grabbed onto it. We haven't been able to study the ship, the ship of state. We haven't been able to even look at the map again. You understand? Because we're holding on to this for dear life in this sea of confusion. You understand? So this is what we mean that many have not, many are in this era because they have not had an opportunity you understand, to study it. So those of us who've had an opportunity to study it, we have a duty. You understand, we have a duty. And this is the word to even Brother Inoc Music and others. Let's get together, you understand, as far as our documents and books, and let's publish some journals. You understand, some journals, if you have gone into this research more, you understand, or certain areas that, that affect or that reference to us as a people and to our commonwealth. If it comes within the purview of our commonwealth, we need to present our findings, our proceedings, for the record, you understand, and mainly for the generation who is to be born, and even for the generation born, but more so for the generation to be born. But anyway, the proper pronoun uh, or, the, or the protocol of his imperial majesty's name is found here. You see this right here? Where it says, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Haile Selassie I, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. Everything more than that, as they say, is superfluous. You understand? Is, 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 everything more than that is very, is, is highly um, questionable and highly disputed. And I would advise brothers and sisters, especially being born again and starting off from the basics, to start off with that basic foundation, the line of Judah hath prevailed, or the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, H-I-M, Haile Selassie the first, or here's Haile Selassie the first, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. And throughout this document and other such official documents, this is the official title, name, and territory. It has, this is the seal. This is his imperial majesty's seal. You know what I'm saying? This is also our seal of authority. I know many ones like to say the King of Kings and Lord of Lords from Revelation, but Revelation is just that. It is a revelation. But there is a mystery also in Revelation because when it says King of Kings and Lord of Lords, it's saying that God 
the Father and the Son in spirit and in truth is one. You know what I'm saying? It's not seeing it as we are seeing it. Because, see, we're seeing it like we see it on the news. We don't see dragons. Generally, we don't see dragons moving about. We don't see a woman standing in heaven with, a, you know, standing in the sun and, or, you know, you know half of the crown or, like, with, with stars. We don't see a lot of this stuff that's going on. We don't see the scorpions flying through the air. Or at least we don't think we see it. We may see helicopters. We may see, 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 like in this case, Ethiopia. We may see the Pope, and the Pope basically uses a dragon symbology, as well as Wales and England. They use, you know, um, bow, 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 moral. You know, they use this, you know, so forth and so on. But it's a revelation. But if we are going to be true witnesses, you understand, witnesses of the King of Kings. We need to refer to the evidence, firstly and foremostly. This doesn't mean that we ignore the fact that, yes, he is the king of kings and lord of lords. In other words, he, Yahweh, God, and manifested in Hala Selassie, and in Hala Selassie is Jesus Christ, the God, Father, Son, one. You understand? Is one. You understand? And we are one in him. So we all are one, and it comes down to the Shema again. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. That Yahweh is Ahad, or Besama Awol, the man says, Kedus, Ahadu, Ahadu Amla. That same oneness. See, some focus more on the Trinity. They like to focus on the threeness and, you know, try to play one against the other. But you can't do that with the one God. See, it's in that grace that he revealed himself. You understand? He revealed himself to those who love him. You understand? This is why the, 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 the true trinity, in that sense, was only revealed amongst the Beta Israel. You understand? And was revealed through Israel because Israel, we were to be God's priests. But then, you remember, we went astray. Our ancestors went astray. Others converted and came into our way and stole our identity and went forward presenting themselves as Jews, presenting themselves as Christians, presenting themselves as Christian leaders, so forth and so on. And it comes down to where we're at today. You understand? And then, in fulfillment of prophecy, who comes to dinner, so to speak? The Lion of Judah hath prevailed. Hala Selassie the first. Elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia. So, this is his proper and we mentioned this before, but it has to be mentioned again and again and again because we have to get it. You understand? We have to get it right. So when you see the lion of the tribe of Judah have prevailed, you understand? The throne is what? The throne of David. It is we. This is why he uses the royal we. But now the change between the royal we and you could say the royal the royal we and the singular you understand is very very understandable because in the next part of this in the next part of this he says this right here it says it says because it is to the servant because it is to the servant he trusts that a master commits his property so have we instructed you to resist the enemy Placing your faith in God while you take care of our army and help everyone in whatever their difficulties may be. In whatever their difficulties may be. Now, all this can be very much more. He even has another 28 there. And he says, the servant here is, of course, Ras Mulugeta. And the emperor is the master. But, overstand... Um, Overstand this right here. If you go back to the first part of the book, the first part of, of book one, and we'll probably conclude roughly around here, but the first part of book one, and you go to His Imperial Majesty's preface, right? A couple of interesting things are, 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 are said right here. Um, and if you go to the last, the fourth, the fourth part of the preface, let's just bring this up right here, the fourth part of the preface right here, right? Read that. You really need to read that, pray on it, meditate, and understand it. Because here he says, um, Fourthly, although there is nothing that is not written in the Holy Scriptures, if you, who, who is, who is Matthew speaking to? Well, we'll say he's, he's praying to God. All right. Um, so he's praying to God. You remember what it says? It says that Christ sits at the right hand 
you understand, until a certain point in time, you understand, and then in Revelation it says that, and you who overcome will be able to sit on, this, on the throne as I am sitting, as I have overcome, and I'm seated with my father, or I'm seated on my father's throne, as some translation of Revelation would say. Now, we have to understand that his majesty, the father, is now, in the Holy Spirit, and through the Holy Spirit, is communicating to the Son, as the Son, when on earth, in the Holy Spirit, communicateth to the Father through the Holy, through, through the Memphis Kedus. Now, this is all according to Tawahido. This is all according to the teachings of the Rit'it, um, our mean of, of, of the true faith, or the correct faith, or the, the, the Ritu'ah Hymenot, which is called the Ethiopic Orthodoxy. Without using the word, we just use the word orthodox as a, the orthodox is a Greek word, and there's a whole thing where instead of saying the uh, rituit, uh, ritua hymenot, or the hymenot, or ritua, or rituit, instead of saying it like that, they actually import the Greek word orthodox, which has a lesser meaning than the rituit, or ritua, or the rit 